decision. The winner and still middleweight champion of the world for all time. The answer is like, marvelous. Like I'm paying the Marvin Hagler. Like Hagler passed the torch to me and I put that thing together with 88. I came home. I came home in 88. He retired in 88. Right? Call the points of his home in I was born in 88. <laughs> Mike Lynch, ladies and gentlemen, he mentioned a few names we'll hear from in just a little bit. Can't get fit. Media members that became so close you to have Marvin, to be they told me they came almost like the division division right now. Why you there? We'll hear from them in, in just a few moments. Right now, we'd like to bring up to the stage a no, world-renowned poet who has roots right no. here in the city of champions. You're a serial stalker. I need a deal. This won't be all over the bots in two. You have to be a serious, serial stalker. I told him that. Like, like, it's to the point. You're showing up everywhere. I don't care where it's at, where it's at, where's the ring you're there. You gotta be a stalker. And when you're a stalker, you got those people that got jobs that's not even in your camp, not even in your business. They got it. Oh, he just came to the room. He showed up and he keeps showing up. Somebody's going to get it back to whoever you're stalking. Canelo. You have to be a serial stalker. Right? To the point where they're going to be trying to keep you out of the building. You got to get the You got to take it. Eventually, they got to play. They gotta talk to somebody. So, um, I wore that hat called War. I wore it in New York when I fought Tito. Black, you remember it? Look at that. That means that means something. I understand. That's what I'm saying. If you look at the Tito fight, I had black and white hats me with the white letters. I had War. I don't know if you remember. Oh yeah. I had War, but that's what it was. You must be a serial stalker. Word That's why I told your dad to bring me over here and tell you that because I want to tell you in your face. I'll close mouth, never get fed. You can be humble. You can be like, I'm just going to wait till they knock on my door. They not. You're too dangerous. You're a threat. Why would I do that? Why would they do that? Guys like Hagler's got like, hey, we be, we be. When? When are we going to do it? But they not cut from that cloth. You got to be a little bit of what you are now. You know a lot about what you was, but they are what they was back then. That means not only heart, but guts to fight anybody in your division. You don't care who it is, as long as they got something to offer, like you do. And always remember, you open your mouth up because you got to feed people. And first you got to feed yourself. They're not going to knock on your door. I'm telling you, now they knock on your door if they see something that they can explore or something that ain't really like that. But they're not going to knock on your door voluntarily. And when somebody say you haven't done anything, if you haven't done anything, it should be easy payday for you. Exactly. No one picks a tough fight just because. They either fight because they've been called out on or they who they are. You heard that up there on stage. Are you that guy? Are you that guy? No, are you that guy? Yes or no? There you go. Let me show you my ticket too. Yes, sir. Don't leave me out, man. I see that. I see. I mean that though. That's real talk. I told him that boy that I was going to say. Stop that, man. This is the first term pro. Yeah, yeah. Let us meet you. I'm going to be rooting for you, man. It's nice to meet you, too. Someday you'll be giving the speech. You know? That was the myth, the legend, the one and only Bernard Hopkins, who is the last fighter to be the undisputed middleweight champion of the world that was more than 16 years ago and now as you all heard on the clip hopkins informed andre you have to be a serial stalker when you're dealing with a fighter that waves the white flag in order to surrender his belt to his mandatory that he's looking to avoid 
when you're dealing with a fighter that's the pioneer of the NBF Witness Protection franchise, Canelo Alvarez, then you have to be a serial stalker in order to get that big of a duck in the ring. That's what the legend Hopkins, Canelo Alvarez, former promoter, was giving Andre the game and jewels about. Hopkins even compared Andre to himself and the legendary Hagler. May he rest in peace when it comes to securing a fight. Since Andre will go down as one of the most feared fighters in the sport of boxing. The boogeyman of the sport. See, Hopkins knows personally, as Canelo Alvarez, former promoter, how much Canelo been avoiding Andre for the last seven years to this day. Keep in mind, it was Canelo Alvarez who set a goal for himself that he wants to become the undisputed champion of the world. Canelo Alvarez informed the public that that was his dream and no one is going to stop him from making his dream become a reality, except an undefeated black American fighter. If you may wonder why that is, because the last time Canelo fought an undefeated black American fighter, he lost nine years ago to Floyd Mayweather. And ever since then, that loss been haunting him to this day which motivated Canelo Alvarez to start No Black Fighters Witness Protection Franchise. According to Canelo, if you ain't white, you ain't right. This is why Canelo only fights European fighters. If you happen to be an undefeated black American fighter or an undefeated Mexican fighter, you get thrown out of the window, which is exactly why Canelo is famously known for being the European assassin. Therefore, to all of the Canelo fans, none of you decafs could come up with the proper excuse to why Canelo Alvarez turned down 40 million guaranteed from the zone to fight Demetrius Andre for undisputed. Keep in mind, that was Canelo Alvarez's highest purse to this day. Therefore, Canelo can't claim you won't pay day, you won't pay day then turn around himself and turn down his biggest payday to this day of 40 million guaranteed to fight Andre for undisputed. It's idiotic for Canelo to tell Demetrius Andre that you want payday when it was Canelo who turned down his biggest purse of his career for undisputed against Andre. And if Canelo wants to blame it on Andre not fighting anybody, Last time I checked, Andre is undefeated, a two-time world champion in two different weight divisions who fought the undefeated Vince, Nelson, and the list goes on and on and on. Andre is the boogeyman of the sport. Even his own mandatory turned down a fight with him. Monguilla, when Canelo was his mandatory at 154, Canelo turned down the opportunity to become a champion, and now he's turning down an opportunity to become undisputed at 160 for his biggest payday. But Canelo has the audacity to question who Andre fought. The better question is who Ivini fought? Who have Kayla Plant fought? I see Canelo chasing down Kayla Plant, but Kayla Plant ain't fought nobody. He's less accomplished than Andre. Oh, that's right. Kayla Plant is not black. It's like when Canelo sees black, he blacks out. How are you going to fight Caleb Plant for Undisputed for less money than you were offered to fight Andre for Undisputed at 160? We all know what time it is. Rocky Fielding ain't never fought nobody. I didn't see Canelo check his resume. And you sure can't blame it on Andre's style and he's not exciting or he runs because Canelo just fought Billy Joe Saunders for 15 million who moves around the ring and less exciting than Andre is. Plus, he took steroids in the past. Again, it's time for Canelo Alvarez fans to tell their champion, their fake champion who's making the country look bad by giving up belts. Just like Andre said, it's time for Canelo Alvarez to grow some cojones and start fighting undefeated black American fighters instead of just Europeans. Everything that I have said is a fact. 
So if you disagree, drop it in the comment section below. But if you're only talking crap instead, we already know what time it is. You agree, but the truth is burning your emotional soul. Because this message have been co-signed by Hopkins, Oscar de la Hoya, Chavez Sr., Morales, Barrera, and all the legendary Mexican greats. They all could see through the fake legacy that Canelo is making. With that being stated, subscribe below and click on the notification bell to be continued on the next episode of Aki, Aki, Aki TV. Peace, and I'm on to the next one. When can we make it happen, though? What do you think? Man, you, you fight with nobody. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, you are a champion, but I do. Wait, wait, you avoid him at 54. You avoid him at 116. Rocky Fan, who he fight? Who he fight? Who he fight? I just asked you a question. I said, who Rocky Fielding fight, though? Wait, listen. They don't want this. Always listen to me. They don't want this. Let's go. We don't get to ask you a big question. Right now. Wait, wait. Watch your mouth, bro. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. When I see you, it's on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you think? What you think? Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. I see you, it's on. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah, now I see what I see you, it's on. Yo, Eddie, make this shit happen, bro. No, no, no. We're good now. Don't get a sucker, no statue. Give him guts. I told you I wasn't going away. You got your shot. Now give me mine. Why don't you get the hell out of there? Shut up, old man. I ain't going nowhere. And why don't you tell all these nice folks why you've been ducking me? Politics, man. This country wants to keep me down. Keep everybody weak. They don't want a man like me to have the title because I'm not a puppet like that fool up there. You know, you've got a big mouth, you know? Why don't you come out and close it, bad boy? Come on. Come on. The little man don't want to come to me. Then I'll come to you people and lay out the truth. I am ranked number one. One! That means I'm the best. But this bomb been taking the easy matches. Fight another bomb. I'm telling you and everybody here. I'll fight him anywhere, anytime, for nothing. Fight him, fight him, fight him. But you, fight him. But you people ain't never gonna see it happen. You see, he don't fight no real man. He fight them set up. I don't care what you rank. You don't get no shot, and I mean that. Nello, you a b I'm putting it out there. No, I don't like to disrespect men that step into the ring, but damn, you fighting Kirtland that hasn't been in the ring since Glenn Tapia. Well, you have an opportunity to fight Demetrius Andre for the WBO. Damn, I thought in the sport of boxing, people want to be a champion, to have that title. I understand you got De La Hoya, you got the promotion team, you got the money, you got the, the contract. I mean, you got the, the country, I mean, you got the country behind you, the fan base. But damn, you scared of getting into a fight. I thought, I thought you was the man. If I knew some Espanol, I'd hit you up with that too, but damn. Come on, man, stop playing. Like shit, man. All I want to do is fight, show people I'm the best in the world. I thank God for everything that comes my way and every obstacle that comes my way, man. I know how to slip, slip and slide in between, man. Yeah. Now with the zone, matchroom, which matchroom Eddie Hearns is supposed to deliver the big fights, offer Charlo seven million dollars to fight me, offer Canelo forty to fight Demetrius Andre, five million dollars more to fight me. Instead, he went up and fought Kovalev. So instead of that $35 million he was getting, they offered him 40 to fight Demetrius Andre. And he was like, nah, I'm going to fight Kovalev. Yeah. Like you said, 54 and 160. He wants to unify 160 after he beat Triple G. You know what he did? He said, nah, I'm not fighting Andre. I'm going to go fight Kovalev. I'm going to go fight Kovalev. So in my standpoint, Next question. Just payday, payday. You want payday? I know that. Payday, payday, right? Payday, payday. <laughs> yo, yo, don't get that little what payday when he get in the ring and fight. They offered him 40 to fight Demetrius Andre. And he was like, nah, I'm gonna fight Kovalev. When am I gonna get my big break? How come I'm not getting it? And what do I gotta do to get it? 
Yeah. I ran up. I ran up to Chavo's press conference twice. Ran up on Triple G in the ring. I wasn't even allowed to be in the ring. I slid under the ropes, bro. This is how much of G I am. Like, yo, they try to stop me from going in the ring. I was like, all right, boom. I had my people hit the corners. The, the, the security came running after them. I slid under the rope, bro. Uh, back in, Ho uh, Muhammad Ali went to sell me Listen's house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pulled up at his house. Uh, uh, Leonard Days. Everybody ran up to somebody's press conference if you were really the man. And you guys wanted to make a fight happen. You, that's what you had to do. And so <laughs> that's what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Somebody just put Aaron Pryor. Like, these are things that was entertaining in boxing what other sport can you go to somebody's press conference and be like yo bro let's fucking fight yeah you can answer you can answer right everybody else's questions hey what do you think about demetrius andre i don't find nobody i don't find nobody and nobody oh <laughs> what do you think about charlo what do you think? so i can't ask him that same question like yo bro what do you, what, what's up bro we can't we can't get it on yeah we can't get it on yeah. Why can't we get it on? Why why Rocky failed it? Why you're done? Why Colin Smith? Who Smith for? Yeah. Who who Billy Joe for? You know, they don't want to see this superhero get beat, bro. That's just what it is. Yeah. You know, that's just Canelo fans protecting their hero. You know, they don't want to cry. They don't want to, you know what I'm saying? They don't want Canelo. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Hello. Let's go. <laughs> like, come on.